Daughters are so special that when a male marries a female, he is reminded constantly that who you have married is the special child of someone, dear to someone. So we tell the husbands that when you look at your wife, don't just look at her as your wife. That's not the only title she has. She had a title before that, which was more dear and more valuable. What was it? She is the daughter of so and so. She also has her own family that loves her and respects her. So do not disrespect her. Do not abuse her. Like they say, don't make her cry. You know, when my wife cries, I always tell her I'm supposed to, I'm not supposed to allow you to cry. She says, I cry out of joy. Mashallah. Okay, that's good. That's a good sign. So if you're crying out of joy and happiness, Alhamdulillah. But if you're crying out of, you know, sadness, you're stuck. There's no way forward. Wallahi, Allah has heard the cry of a wife and a daughter. If you take a look at Surah Al-Mujadala, named after a woman who came through in order to present her case to Muhammad Sallallahu where the husband became disinterested in her. Listen to this. And I, inshallah, I will end on this note. I tell you, very interestingly, there was a woman known as Khawla binti Thalaba, radiallahu anha. So what happened to her is she was married. And mashallah, you know, a pretty beautiful woman, next thing expecting she has a child. And when you have a child, what happens? Subhanallah, people forget that you've now born children. You've, you've graduated into a new level of, you know, motherhood now and so on. You will not be the same girl you used to be 20 years back. Things have to change. Perhaps you may change in so many ways. You become wiser and perhaps you may even become a little bit heavier. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. She complained because her husband started losing interest or showed disinterest. She, he was not interested. And he started saying whenever she was trying to get him, get his attention, he would say, you're just like my mother, man. It's okay. You know, you're just like a mother. You're just like my sister and so on. She went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa crying, weeping, complaining. What do I do? This man is saying this to me. He, he refuses to touch me. And at the same time, he is the one who impregnated me. He gave me the children. He is the one who did this, this, this. When I married him, I was in tip top shape and so on. My mothers and sisters, I just want to pause for a moment to tell you that that does not mean that when you have given birth, you should just lose yourself. No, go back. You will be able to retain a lot. If you work on it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Whether they are sit-ups, leg-ups, whatever you want to call them, they work. <laughs> Trust me, they actually work dedicatedly. So don't use a hadith in order for you to throw yourself, you know, to the side. No, work on it. You will feel good by the will of Allah. Like I said, do it for the right reasons. Going back to this narration. So as she's complaining, do you know what happened? The Prophet wasallam. Obviously, it's a difficult situation. What do you say? You need to convince the man. Verses were revealed. Indeed, Allah has heard the argument of the woman who has come to you complaining. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has heard it. And then he gives the response. And it's a long uh, set of verses where Allah speaks of the punishment of those who say those type of statements. And how special and important the woman is. You don't just say these words. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to make the correct decisions in life.